next on Rugby Wrap-Up, Brian Ray, Dan Power, Matt McCarthy with Major League Rugby's playoff picture, plus their MVPs in the West and the East. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub. The Murphy Kennedy Group, founded with the idea that construction can be done better. And Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City, Brian Ray in Nova Scotia, and Dan Power in Denver. And what a weekend in Major League Rugby to end the regular season, guys. We got a lot to cover. So let's go with a quick recap. We'll punch some bullet points. Then we're going to pick our conference MVPs. Each one of us is going to pick a conference MVP from the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. And then we're going to figure out who's going to win the first round in the playoffs. So what was great was all but one match were decided by five points or less, right? And, and, and that is just a great way for an improbably excellent season, Major League Rugby season four, to end and then set us up for this playoff picture. But getting back to those matches, New York hosted NOLA. And New York did what they had to do. And then spelled some players, but there was no doubt they wanted to win this one. And New Orleans showed the heart of a lion, clawing their way back and winning basically at death or in the last minute or so, stunning the New York crowd, Brian. Yeah, uh, you know, there was such a, a tall order for Nola to come out and get the result they really wanted out of this one. And for about, you know, seven minutes or so, you know, when that kick went through for Hanno Dirksen, we thought he was going to score two tries in about five minutes. Uh, for about that long, we thought, okay, this might be Nola's day. But then uh, New York just kind of woke up. And from then on, it was, I mean, it was a bloodbath, that match. You, know, you could tell every hit, it was so ferocious. But uh, New York, you could tell they really wanted that. You could see that one. You know, the the butcher, you know, took a couple knocks in his in his ribs there. You could tell he was down for a little bit longer than usual. Got back up, kept going, and uh, they got the job done. And, uh, you know, they didn't get the win in the end. But, you could, I mean, you could see Nick Savetta's smile was as wide as he is tall, standing on the sidelines. And he knew uh, that they really got what they wanted, which was to get through. They got that bonus point when Foden went over, and uh, and that was it. That was all she wrote. So unfortunate. But uh, I, I think it pretty much went how we expected, where Nola got the win, but it was going to be enough to cover that spread and it was great to see ben foden you know our, our star that's been here from the beginning at least with new york and still going and having that great try coming out of nowhere to score that try and dan it was 35 32 and there was a missed penalty kick by dan holland's head in the beginning of the game from just left of the post just left of the post and it looked like I kicked. Let me ask you this. Did you make mention before he kicked it that he was going to kick it? Because you know that's a real thing. The commentator's curse. It's a real thing. And I want to know if Dan Hollinshead needs to find Matt McCarthy and have a talk to him about what he says before he kicks moving forward. I think it might have been more of a case of when we made a man of the match last week. And I said to him, Dan, you, you're the you best kicker the kick. ever. Yeah. And he's like, and after the, after the match, I saw him, he's like, you brought up the missed kick. First thing you brought up. I'm like, yeah. In his head. In his head. I'm glad you didn't blame Mike Petri, though. You're, you're evolving, Matt. I'm proud of you. Thank you. But, yeah, great game. And exactly how everyone on the show kind of saw it going. Nola winning, not enough to cover the spread. New York kind of put the uh, put the tools away once Fode scored that try, didn't they? You could see it was almost like you could feel the sigh of the relief, you know, coming out of the stadium that, oh, it, okay. You know, because it's obviously that seed of doubt that Nola could do it. But then when it got put to bed, so the result was really, um, you know, not really relevant at that point. But I think New York Atlanta sets up probably for the ideal Eastern Conference final now because Atlanta haven't beaten New York this year. And but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, sorry. We, we do our sorry. picks. So yeah, let's leave it, let's leave it as a cliffhanger, Dan. For God's sakes, this is a show. So the next one, Austin went to the nation's capital to face Old Glory, and Old Glory said, "I'll take your Sam Houston and the Alamo and win it for Betsy Ross, Brian Ray." I don't know if you know who any of those people are. This is just a disaster of a show already. <laughs> um, you know, it was a it was a really entertaining match. I really liked this one. 
Uh, you know, both teams trying to play some rugby. Old Glory really throwing the ball around, having some fun. You love to see Jason Robertson in his last match with the, with DC, you know, running around, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, scored good tries. And Mungo Mason with another absolutely ludicrous try. That's like two in two weeks. He had that one spinorama one the week before. This time he's playing soccer, you know, bounces up, he scores himself. Like just crazy. But, you know, uh, you know, Austin, a good one too. Will McGee, giant in the spot with that awesome cross kick to Roderick Waters. Uh, wide. So I thought this was just a fun match, although it was a little bit spirited again, you know, got a little bit chippy in that end, a bit of a fracas at the end too. So uh, unfortunate maybe scenes there, but uh, overall I, th I thought it was a fun, entertaining way to end the season for both of them. You know, one side had to win. Oh, glory. I thought would win because they had a little bit of an advantage at home and, uh, and they got it done with their Eagles back in the lineup. Yeah, Dan, that was, uh, that was one that a couple of us went with old glory at home. Yeah, well, when I saw the Cuisine Cup was on the line, I just knew that Old Glory were, you know, solid bet there. Uh, how do you not? I mean, it's up there with the Texas Cup. Uh, I want to see what happened at the end there with uh, Mason Peterson coming off the bench after Jason Robinson. And uh, we kind of just lose it for a second where I think something must have happened to get big, uh, big Mace fired up. But uh, it was definitely a spicy end of the season. And now... And that sets up a good little rivalry between those two sides. But good to see Old Glory fans get it. I like seeing the home side win, especially in those games where there's no bearing on the playoffs. So it's good for Old Glory to finish the season with a win. It's been a tough year for them. The next one, L.A. went and got a taste of those Utah Warriors late comeback heroics and were put to the sword basically again at death. Brian. Yeah, you know... Um the Utah forwards really did a number on them in the first half of this. Uh, the, the scrum was pretty impressive, you had to say. Uh, a couple of line-out drives went really well, and they were looking. You know, when I saw the lineups, we, we were really unsure what was going to happen for this one. We thought L.A. was going to rest their big guns. We really weren't sure what Utah was going to do. But when we saw that, Utah was full strength. This was a game they had to win. So um, they they looked in pretty good shape. And then, unfortunate to the, uh, the Canadian on the Utah side, went a little, uh, shall we say, <laughs> dance crazy out there uh, and stepped where he shouldn't have, got sent off. Uh, and that's unfortunate for, for Mr. Hurst. He's probably going to miss this, this next match because of it. But it gave uh, LA a window. And to their credit, they came close. They almost uh, got back and took it at the end. Now, Utah stuck it out. They got the win they needed. That's a big win for them. At the same time, a couple shaky tries in that when the first try that LA scored, I thought was pretty weak. Um, they bounced back. They got it done, but they're going to have to do better uh, moving forward. But again, we'll get to that conversation shortly. Dan, 34-29 in front of that great crowd, Warriors Nation. Yeah, well, this one for me was uh, choices of the coaching staff. Darren Coleman rests. I think we'll probably be nine or ten starters that you'll see in the 23 at least in the 23 this coming week. Sean Pittman says we're going all out. You know, we, we need consistency. We've had some stars away for two weeks in the National. Let's get our, you know, you know, cohesion back with this game. Just quickly though, Matt, Adam Channel, uh, the young kid on the wing for LA. Looks like he's got a pretty bright future. He's, he did a couple of really good things. Uh, also thought Ryan James had a, had a couple of real good touches. We used to see him running, right? We saw him with that little pass to uh, Pangal Haini. Put him through. That's a that's a tough skill to master. And Ryan James showed kids everywhere that that's why you do the kick chase because you might have that opportunity to get a try. Right, that one lost yeah. in the sun, big bounce yeah. right to him. Whippy couldn't see it. Bam into the try zone. That's because he was hustling. Write that down, yes, kids. Sir. Next one, Atlanta went into Quincy and the Free Jackson Woodgie made both John Adams and John Quincy Adams proud. Yeah, what a what a fun match this one. I mean, it was what twenty two to five for the Free Jacks by halftime. Vian Conradi was having a stormer out there for them in his final game for them. Gets his try uh, pretty early in the match in that one, and then that great uh, score again. Uh, about in Waka picking out the Tuidraki Semusema Vodre wide open uh, to score that try just before halftime, and you really felt like okay. Uh, the Free Jacks have got this, but then, but not 
really. I mean, you knew that rugby ATL was going to come out with something. You could just see, you know, Scott Lawrence at halftime, just staring at everybody and not saying a word for the whole of halftime, just kind of, you know, staring through their Melting souls. People imploding you know. their heads. <laughs> and they came out and they were a much better team in that second half. And man, it was close right at the end, which made for great entertainment for the fans. I'm glad that they delivered that. Uh, glad at the same time to see the Free Jacks get the win because at the end of the day, it really didn't mean much for, uh, for ATL. They were just having a look at guys, you know, how they would get through uh, for selection this coming week. So I think uh, lots of stuff to take forward for, for both teams. It's certainly a great way to sign off uh, the season for Ryan Martin, especially leaving them. Which team in the Eastern Conference, as a Toronto Arrows fan, do you hate the most? Do I hate the most? Well, New York, obviously. I mean, what kind of a question is you, that? I thought he was going to say, oh, I don't hate anyone. I'm a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hockey it's rugby oh, okay new york all right fair enough dan what was your take on this one well steve lewis would have been proud looking into the stands and seeing the kilts and the face paint it looked like the battle of sterling didn't it as they were coming out there they getting behind their scottish center and dougie five which was and- kind of confusing mel gibson's patriot and braveheart Right. Like I imagine paul mel you know i don't know what he's up to now i'm sure it's something crazy but what, what, a, what a tough position for, for Mel Gibson to be in, having to choose between two of his films. But game was great. And again, I love the home side getting the win to end the season. They christen Quincy with a win, so it's brilliant. And it's not named for Quincy Jones. It's named for John Quincy Adams, who was John Adams' son, for all of you folks across the pond and those that didn't stay awake in history class. The last one, Seattle vanquished Houston in front of that rocking star fire stadium crowd. Finally, Tony Ridnell beating his chest, everything great again. And Seattle finishes with a flourish, Brian. Yeah, it's great to see a great atmosphere. Uh, the Seawolves playing really well. Cup, you know, that little stretch in the second half when Houston got what three tries in about 15 minutes. You know, they by that time they were kind of in cruise control at that point. I mean, they they monstered them in the first half. The two big second rows got the first couple tries and they were just kind of beating them up, you know, old school Seawolves. Uh, but you know, frankly. I didn't really care about the match. I was just so impressed to see Kat Roche out there in the middle uh, doing a great job. I really genuinely thought she did a great job for her first match ever out there. So uh, hats off to her um, and uh, absolutely can't wait to see her and more like her. You know, we'd love to see Emilia Luciano maybe getting there and doing one day a game or whenever next season and and doing more. So, uh, you know, this is just breaking down the wall. So congrats to her. Dan, what did you have to think about that one? Just want to echo Brian Sediment said. Cat's 26, and uh, you talk about breaking down barriers. You know, she kicked them down, and it wasn't a case of her being a woman that she got a shot to referee it. It's because she worked her butt off the last two years doing these games, and um, I agree. I I felt she went out there. I I watched the game with a normal critical eye that I would of anyone else refereeing the match, and I thought she was outstanding, handled the pressure. And that's pressure. Starfire's pressure. That place gets loud. That's an old, the tin, the metal, whatever it is that makes the stadium. That's loud up there. You guys have been there. You know what it's like. That can be intimidating. And, and she did a great job. And the game, Seattle fans get to finish season on a win. But going back through their record, the losses they had, the single-digit losses they had throughout the year, man, what a different season it could have been for Seattle if they had just got the bounce of the ball or Maybe Alan Clark could have got there a little earlier or something, but they, they're going to they, be good next year. They, they will be. They will be back. Seawolves fans, you come. You, I think you'll be back. You'll be strong next year again. So there you have it. Dan Power just picked the Seattle Seawolves to win the Shield next year. Yes, right here. Gutsy call. Love it, Dan. Uh, before- Free Willie, top three. Top. Top three. He says they're going to win three times in a row from next year on, he said, ladies and gentlemen. He just said that here on the air. Yeah. Uh, but before we break, Brian, I want to thank you and Doug Coyle uh, for, for being like sort of my Cyrano de Bergerac in supplying the information that I steal from both of your websites to act like I know what I'm talking about in the booth. So I don't know who that is, but I'll, uh, I'll go with it. Thanks. What? <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. I, I agree, Matt. I've always enjoyed reading Brian's work and then fact checking it with Doug's to get the correct information for the game. So <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back with our 
respective MVPs in each conference, and then tell you who's going to win next week. Don't go away. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. at Rugby Wrap-Up with Brian Ray with a fancy backdrop representing the Major League Rugby Playoffs uh, picture and Dan Power also with the brackets. So they've got it all covered and I'm just here in New York City at my Sky Crib studio. But guys, it's time for us to get back to work and that work means that we are picking our Western and Eastern Conference MVPs respectively. Does either one of you want to go first? Does it matter? Okay, Dan, you can go first. Dan, go ahead. I was passing it the gentleman way to Brian, but Western first. We're going West. Yes, Western first. Let's go out yeah, West first. Yeah, West is Mike Tao, Utah Warriors, fullback. Um, probably one of the best individual seasons I've seen in MLR, That what he's done. And, and the transformation of the Warriors this year, Sean Pittman deserves a lot of credit. So does Sean Davies, Brendan Sparks. But on the field, Mike Tao deserves a lot of credit. He has had just a remarkable year as a player and a leader for that team. And I know he's probably thinking I've got two games left to cap that off. But right now, I would say that he would be my guy in the West. I like it. I like it. Brian, how do you counter that? Yeah, it's tough because I really like that pick too. But uh, yeah, we're not here to pick the same name. So we're going to pick someone else. Uh, you know, for all the stars that... Uh, that LA has, and they do. Uh, I think you got to pick a star in that team who was really good. Uh, they're a different team with Matt Gitto in at 10. Uh, you know, there's some good guys on that team. Harrison Goddard, obviously outstanding. Adam Ashley Cooper, you know, everybody on the team. It's, it's some good players, but, but Gitto, he doesn't rack up a lot of meters. You know, he's not making big hits out there. He's doing all the little things and he directs the play so amazingly well. Uh, he knows where to go at all times on the field. I mean, you can just see the uh, the command that he has when he's out in the field. They are a different team. They're more confident with him. Uh, you know, we can call them whatever the, the flashy superstars if you want, but uh, they still had to go out and get it done on the field. They still took a beating like everybody else. And I just thought Gitto, for a guy who's 150 years old, uh, did an amazing job. He lived up to his billing this year. So I'm going to go with Matt Gitto. Yeah, but he's really buff when he takes his shirt off. So that's <laughs> not – yeah. Come on. That's, who's kidding who? You see him on that scooter? God's sakes. I'm being told I can't take Hubert Chicago off the Russian on the Dallas Jackals. I have to take my second pick, and that's going to be Dave Dennis – of Los Angeles, uh, just the workhorse, you know, in the engine room, you don't get the glory that the get toes and the Ashley Coopers get, but this guy was invaluable to that team. He is just smashing on both sides of the ball, always at the breakdown and he looks great. So I'm going with Dave Dennis of the LA Guiltinis. Let's go over to the Eastern conference and Dan, since you went first with the Western conference, you can go first again with the Eastern conference. Thank you, Matthew. Well, I, I did mention him already, and it is uh, the new man crush of the young Conradi, the number eight for New England. May have mentioned the broadcast. It was meant to go to the Dallas Jackals expansion, you know, the dispersion draft, sorry. Doesn't get picked up. No one, no one calls his name. And a little bit, you know, for an unknown commodity at that point, Namibian International. New England picking him up close to the season late, and boy, oh boy, uh, there's got to be 11 sides kicking themselves that they didn't take a punt and grab him. His engine is just incredible. His work rate, incredible. He hits. I mean, a few weeks ago when they played Seattle, he put a shot on Samu Manoa. I've never seen Samu, you know, rock like that, even in the premiership. So uh, he's on his way to Gloucester as a reward for a great season. I think that's no better indication of a great season than 
you know, a big club over in the UK like Gloucester picking him up. Now I'm going to go with another guy with a massive engine who plays for rugby ATL as a second row by the name of Johan Momsen, uh, who is just an unbelievable, uh, I mean, he does everything. Uh, the line out is so much better when he's, and he's not like he's, uh, you know, hugely tall. That's kind of, you know, maybe his thing. And South Africa's, you know, it's like the minimum height you need is Nick Savetta 6'8 to get a, even a look in at Super Rugby, which is crazy because he does so much around the field. You know, he's like an extra loose forward out there. Huge tackles. I think he's near the top in the league for offensive tackles. Uh, um, you know, the line out is completely different when he's on there, whether he's pinching the other teams or winning his own. He's just amazing support lines. I mean, you don't see second row scoring tries like he does. Uh, and he's just a presence out there i mean that second row combination with marno redling ice is, is just fearsome out there so uh i, I thought momson was good last year i thought he's been even better this year uh i think he's been absolutely stellar for them uh and i'm can't wait to see him playing against uh new york pretty soon these are all great great picks great picks and and i was looking at L atlanta too and i was thinking carlsa has has had a great season for atlanta and when everybody thought that they were going to be in disarray, losing their, their fly half early in the season. And he just he moved around, played multiple positions, but, but he was basically the field general on that field and he was excellent, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, since you already picked somebody from Atlanta, I'm going to come North. I'm going to go to New York. I know save your letters, but they are in the playoffs and they had to go through a lot in COVID in New York city. You know, if you're not from New York city. You don't understand it. Uh, playing in Jersey city should say it all. And you could go through a couple of the guys in the engine room. Dylan, the butcher Fawcett always has big games. Nate Brakely, the, the steady force. But the guy that changed everything for New York this year was Andy Ellis. And I'm, I'm going to go with the former All Black, the guy that won the World Cup. He was exceptional. On, off the pitch, media, wherever you needed him, he did everything as well as anybody could possibly ever imagine and, and even better than that. And he was also, you see him, you see him everywhere. Dirty work, engine room, bottom of the rucks, all over the place, throwing that body around. Andy Ellis is my pick. Any arguments? New York's a different side when he plays. Like, yeah. That's an MVP, right? But so are the guys that you brought up. So now who's your MVP of the league, Brian? Andy Ellis, obviously. Oh. It's not even a second thought. Uh, are you kidding? Or are you, you serious? No, I'm kidding. All right, who's your MVP of the league? <laughs> you know what? We'll save that till yeah, next I, week. Yeah, I can't pick that yeah. yet. It's not over yet. Save that to next week. That was a tease, right, Dan? <laughs> yeah, way to sink the hook, buddy. All right, without further ado, let's get to who's going to win these matches. First one, New York in Atlanta, Saturday night. Kara Pryor is out. Unless there's a miracle reversal of the red card, it's likely not going to happen. Talk to J.P. Doyle after the match. Much to the chagrin of the execs from New York, he said, I saw him punch him in the face. It was a clear red. It wasn't going to be a second yellow. Mm -hmm. Apanisa Thakaubalabu will be very fortunate to play after his naughtiness. And Dan Holland said he's going to be on a plane back to New Zealand because his contract kicks in with meter 10, with the meter 10. So he's not available. Well, nothing you've said has changed my mind. I'm still going for ATL. Okay. So, okay. so, yeah, you're, you're, picking, so you're picking New York. Yeah, ATL. Yeah. New York ATL. Yeah. 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 And the New York Rattlesnakes. Rattle. New York Rattlers. And Brian, yeah. you're going with your boys from New York, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, New York beat them uh, twice already this season. But uh, when you put it that way, <laughs> it's hard to pick against ATL. Uh, yeah. Look, ATL's missing. I think they may be missing Rory Van Voot. Um, I think that's pretty much it. They got Ryan Nell back now. They got Kurt Coleman back now to an already stacked back line. Matt Hayden. I, I just, Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Hayden Hayden. just got back just in time. Yeah. Uh, you know, these guys have everything going for them right now, playing at home. I just don't see how you can pick anybody uh, but ATL in this one. Okay, that's what that, that's that's exactly what Herb Brooks said to the, the Team USA Olympic hockey team in 1980. I don't think you know we. I don't see how we're going to beat them, guys. No, I agree with you guys. <laughs> there is no way in hell New York should win this match. None, no way, zero, zilch. But as in Dumber Dumber, there's a chance. There's a chance, and I am going with. New York because I am scared to death of Marty Veal and Dylan Fossil. All right, on that note, let's go to the Western Conference. Brian, 
Who's winning out there? Yeah, this is an intriguing one. Uh, the, the issue I have with picking Utah is that they really didn't beat them by much with a pretty strong side at home this past weekend. They're going to have to improve a lot. LA, you know, I don't know how many of their top guys are coming back, but even some of them is going to make a big difference. You have to figure a lot of them are coming back at home. Memorial Coliseum. Jeez. Uh, it's, I got to go with LA. I mean, they will be the favorites and uh, I just think that they're going to be too strong in this one. Um, you know, Utah is the romantic choice, but uh, yeah, I got to pick LA in this one. The question here is Fraser Hurst, red card, probably going to go the same way at Cara Pryor here, right? He's probably going to be suspended. Would be my initial guess on that one. Is that is there that much of a drop off between him and Baska? No, well, Baska starts, but Baska had a big bag of ice on his shoulder, and he wasn't looking great uh, in terms of his shoulder. He was playing really well. You got uh, Danny Christensen there as well, who who now luckily had that time when the Baska and Hurst were away and, and did quite well. But it's going to be a tough ask, mate. Because- going up against Goddard. Yeah, you're going against Harrison Goddard, but not only Goddard, but now Poitivan comes back as well from injury, Tommy. Angus Cottrell's still got a week to go on his suspension, so that's a big loss, but Poitivan helps offset that a little bit. Uh, and you've got nine, ten guys who got rested this week. Like, go through some of the names that were rested at the Coliseum. I mean, sometimes it, it'll be really tough for Utah to win this game. I can see ways they're going to win it, and, and there, there is the blueprint that Nolan, New York, Atlanta – all kind of followed when the Stars were playing. But it's it's a tall order. Big game, big game, big players. And LA has the big players. I got to think, am I, if I'm, am I going with my head or my heart? You know, if I'm going with my head, I'm picking the Giltinis. If I'm going with my heart, I'm going with the Warriors. And the Warriors, by, by definition, have heart. That's why they're Warriors. I'm going with the goddamn Warriors over the Giltinis in an upset. So Warriors, think? New York in the final? Warriors, New York in the final. In Salt Lake City. In Salt Lake City. Count it. Boom. I'm American dead Airlines. wrong, but I'm going Three with tickets. It. Let's go, Salt Lake. I'm going with my heart, folks. You got You listen to the, the guys that uh, are a little bit more objective here. That's what my suggestion would be. And on that note, we're out of time. I want to thank Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News calling in all the way from Nova Scotia, Dan Power from Major League Rugby Headquarters, HQ Satellite Office in Denver. I'm Matt McCarthy in New York. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next week after this week's playoff matches. But in the meantime, we'd like you to check out our other segments, including the Rugby Odds, featuring WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, the world's best sports better ever in the Philly Godfather, and Rugby's Gift, Gift A. Bailu, Martial Law, The Zack Attack, And please sign up for our Rugby Wrap-Up Red Cross Blood Donor Team.